Hello and welcome everyone to another Hasselbad webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Mark Whitney, uh, part of the Hasselblad European marketing team and today we're going to have a quick um, webinar on our new XH converter 0.8 and also cover the new firmware update 1.4.0. I'm going to be joined by my colleague Chris Coos in a minute to go through some of the technical aspects of these updates and new products. And then uh, we've got Sean Conboy and Tom Oldham that will also be joining us later um, to talk about their user experience of uh, using the new converter for a shoot. Um, so just to go through a few bits before we start, as usual, this webinar will be recorded. And so if you want to watch it back afterwards, it will be on the Hasselbad YouTube channel within a few hours of the webinar finishing. And also all our previous webinars are on there as well. So if you've missed any over the last few weeks and months, uh, you can look back on them there. And then just to confirm today's agenda, so first of all, Chris will talk us through the firmware update 1.4.0. Uh, we'll then have a look at the XH converter 0.8. And then, as I said, we'll have a discussion with Tom and Sean uh, about their user experience. So we estimate this to be sort of 30 to 40 minutes and leaving some time at the end for some questions. So if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to drop them into your um, go to webinar control panel. They'll come through to us and we'll try and ask um, as many relevant questions as possible. So, hi, Chris, are you there? Yeah, hi, Mark. OK, I'm just going to transfer control over to you. OK, hopefully you should be able to see my uh, second screen. So, uh, Starting off with firmware uh, 1.4, this is applicable to X1D2 and the 907X, uh, regular edition and special. So the first main feature that's been added uh, through version 1.4 uh, is a distance scale. Uh, this is a fairly regularly requested uh, option, to be honest, and so through your main live view screen, whether you're in, obviously you're using the rear screen or the EVF on the X1D, or obviously on 907, it's just the rear screen. Once you're in live view mode, to bring up this option, you press the rectangle button there. You'll need to press it a couple of times to work through the options, and you should end up with the distance scale overlay. Now, this scale works whether you're using autofocus, manual focus, and the uh, distance indicator will move accordingly. So I'll just show you what we mean. So a short video. So as you've manually focus, uh, position will update. And away you go. So very, very uh, easy to, to bring on. And again, when you want to uh, move away from that, again, press the rectangle screen to go back to your standard overlay. In terms of additional options for uh, interval timer, a couple of little changes here. So on the original option, you could only meter when you were using the intervalometer basically for the first frame in a series. Now, that then was locked in for however many frames you've chosen. So if you've done 100 frames, 1,000 frames, you were going to work off your first exposure setting. Depending on the type of image you were trying to capture, that could be problematic. So imagine for a, a, a intervalometer series over maybe a sunrise, sunset, you want the metering to update literally for each frame. So that's now the option. So as you can see here, each frame is the option. You can select that or you can stick with the original for first frame only, depending on what you're shooting. The other little change within the intervalometer is the uh, breakdown of the shooting group. So if you're shooting one to 25 frames, you can choose the individual frame number. Now also between five, uh, in batches of five, of between 25 and 100, and then batches of 50 between 100 and 1,000. But obviously there is also the still the, the no limit, which will just continue shooting until the card is full. So just a little bit more um, streamlining of the options available there. The 1.4 update also brings a few uh, subtle changes when you're using Focus Mobile 2. 
Um, obviously, Focus Mobile 2 itself has been receiving regular updates. Effectively, the live view quality has been enhanced, so uh, much so sharper looking display, uh, finer details displayed. Uh, also, when you're making on the fly settings on either the camera or on the iPad, those will be immediately reflected uh, in the system. So basically, everything should match, if you like, on a, a, a live update. So you should never end up with a, a difference between the two systems when you're looking at them. So to access these features, uh, you're going to need to do two sets of firmware updates. Obviously, the first one is the body, and that's the same version depending on whether it's an X1D2 or a 907. So you'll need to load uh, 1.4 into the camera body. And then for the XED lenses, for all lenses except for the 45P, you'll need to load uh, 0.60. Six, sorry, 0 0.6.0. And if you're using the XED 45P, you'll need to load 0 0.1.26. All these are available, obviously, on the Hazelblad website for download. Um, and we'll talk about how to load uh, firmware updates later on when we've talked about the converter. So that's a real short summary on the, the new functionality that we added with 1.4. Uh, as I say, the distance scale was something that had been asked for many, many times, so it, it's great that we've managed to actually get that added. So moving on to our uh, most recent release, which was the XH Converter 0.8. So very similar looking to the standard XH adapter, uh, but obviously this is the converter, so we've got the optics inside, which do some uh, very nice tricks, which we'll work through now. So as a, as a summary of the device, you get a focal length reduction of 0.8, uh, two thirds of a stop increase on the aperture across the whole uh, lens range for that. The angle of view that will be delivered will be very close to uh, the angle of view achievable if you were to use the same lens on a H60 100. And the optical performance is approved uh, most noticeably on the edges. Uh, we'll talk about that as we work our way through. So in terms of a, a primary user that this uh, particular uh, accessory is aimed at, obviously, first and foremost, for those users that have uh, a H60 100 plus an X camera, this uh, allows your full range of H lenses to be used on your X camera but retaining the original angle of view. So if you're used to using a 24 millimeter lens on your H60 100, this will allow you to use the same lens on your uh, X camera and still achieve exactly the same field of view. For X system only owners, obviously this is a way of expanding even further the range of optics that can be used on that camera. If you take into account the other adapters that are available for uh, V-system lenses, X-pan lenses, and so on, there's a huge range of optics that are now available to be used on that camera. So moving on to the um, functionality, what does it actually do? Standard HC lenses uh, project uh, an image circle that is designed to cover effectively 645 film, and also that will well cover the 53.4, the, the 100 megapixel sensor. So we have a, a graphic here that basically shows the approximation of the image circle in the blue. This is the image area that will be taken by the 100 megapixel sensor. And this is the field of view that you will get. If we were to take the same lens, and in this case, it's a, a HC100, attach the standard XH adapter, so with no optics in it, onto the same camera, the X camera. Effectively, the sensor being smaller than the 100 megapixel will then take a smaller area out of that image circle. So if in effect, you then get a small crop factor occurring and you're taking that smaller area out of the image circle. So that gives you a, a cropped field of view. So you're losing uh, some of the image you had on the 100. The main point of the converter 
is it allows us to do two things at once. So we take that image circle and we reduce it down to fit the 4433 sensor. That way there's little or no wasted uh, field of view. Plus that in turn gives us a reduced focal length of uh, 0.8 times. So your 100 mil lens would actually be the equivalent of an 80 mil. And we'll work through how this all occurs in a, in a second. So with our standard optics here on the left hand side, normally with the XH adapter, there is just a spacer, basically to replace what would have been the H camera in the normal H system. And so we have a full image circle as we just described. So the full outer rays are up here and effectively the sensor that we will use crops off the area that we need. So we end up losing field of view. With the converter, this optical train is inserted here between the lens and the camera body and effectively brings the outer rays or the whole image circle down to fit the smaller sensor. So you can see that the, the height here is considerably smaller than the original height. That way we can keep our full field of view. For the two thirds of a stop aperture increase, uh, in, in a very simple way, normally aperture is uh, calculated based on focal length of the lens, and the entrance pupil diameter. So the physical gap that the incoming light beam is traveling through towards the sensor. So as an example, if we're using the 100 millimeter lens, the uh, pupil diameter is around 45 millimeters. And so if we divide 100 by 45, we end up with our maximum aperture in the standard lens of about 2.2. So that's in essence where we get our standard markings on our standard aperture calculation. Now, inserting the uh, converter into the optical train here, as we said earlier, it reduces the focal length by uh, a factor of 0.8. So that 100 millimeter lens in the previous example is now an 80 millimeter. But obviously the, the, the gap, if you like, that the light rays coming in can travel through is still the same. So now we're dividing 80 by this, and so that gives us our working aperture of 1.8, because effectively it's an 80 millimeter lens that we're now using. So we get that slightly, well, in this case, considerably reduced depth of field uh, with the 1.8. Uh, this effect works right across. So if you were originally working on F16, you get a two thirds stop increase there as well. One of the other major uh, improvements really is lens performance, especially on the edges. So by bringing the uh, image circle down to literally just the size of the sensor, very slight, slightly larger. By doing that, your outer rays don't have to be diverged so much uh, so that you could have much better control of the uh, axial illumination and effectively uh, the color uh, fringing that you sometimes get when you've got wide ranging uh, axial rays right at the edge of the lens, you can control that better. Basically, then you can achieve much better uh, resolution and color and contrast control right across the frame. So as you can see here in general, uh, general contrast across the frame on the standard lens is good, but with the converter and the condensed image circle, which gives you better aberration control, edge performance, plus higher illumination because you brought that light into a smaller area, you can see the performance has increased right across. Quick table, just to prove the point in terms of the field of view. So if we look again at our 100 mil lens here, so our new working uh, lens focal length is 80 mil with a 1.8 aperture. And we have a, a 38 uh, degrees diagonal view. The original, if we were using that same lens on our 100 megapixel camera is 37 degrees, so pretty close. But obviously with the standard adapter, we had that cropped view, which was 31 degrees. So we can see here that with the XH converter, we managed to get that shorter focal length 
shallower depth of field and the same angle of view, which is the whole point of it, compared to our standard XH adapter. So a quick summary, original frame here, uh, 100 mil 2.2 on the 100 megapixel sensor. If we use a standard adapter, we end up with a cropped frame. Uh, we're reduced field of view at our standard aperture. With the XH converter, you have the original field of view and that's slightly sh or a shallower depth of field if we're talking about the 100. In terms of firmware to use it, each camera body will have to be updated plus your HC, HCD lens. Now, your HC, HCD lens will need to have 19.1.0 loaded into it. And that's regardless of whether this issue, which we'll come back to, is, is in play or not. And then your X camera, depending on which camera it is, will need either 1.4 or 1.26 loaded into the camera. If your H lens has firmware which is 18 or higher, then with the upgrade, if you haven't done it already, the upgrade will then give you autofocus using the adapter or the converter. Unfortunately, if your lens had firmware which is lower than uh, 18, so 17 point something, although you will be able to use the adapter and the converter, you won't be able to uh, have autofocus. So just bear in mind, uh, depending on your starting firmware version, you may or may not actually be able to get autofocus, but you will be able to use the converter and the adapter. Okay, so that pretty much uh, covers the, uh, the, should we say, the technical detail. Uh, back to you, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, very good detailed um, explanation there. Thanks for that. Now, a couple of quick questions, if you don't mind, just before we yeah, sure. move on. Um, so the distance scale, does it work with all lenses or does is it limited just to the XCD lenses? No, no. Uh, basically, uh, I've tried as an example, HCD 24mm and HC 100 on the uh, converter on a on a 907, and it worked fine with that as well. Okay, and then also just a quick recap: how you would update the firmware on an X1D and a 907? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a good one. So basically, you'll need to go to firstly Hasselblad.com, uh, access the firmware pages, select your camera, whether it's a 907, X1D Mark One, or Mark Two and download the, the latest version of firmware, which should be either 1.4 or 1.26, depending on which camera you've got. So you will download that, and then you'll also need to download 19.1 for uh, loading into the H lens. So you can select any H lens and it, pick this firmware from that. Once you've downloaded them to uh, your computer, you need to copy those two files to an SD card. From that point, you can put the SD card into the camera and then all you need to do then is go to uh, service and effectively, the, uh, which is in the general settings mode into service and then select uh, update. And it will then scan your SD card to see if there is any applicable updates. And obviously you should see two. So update the camera and it could take five, seven minutes. Once that's done, Obviously, with the converter and your H lens attached to the camera, you then select the second update, in this case 19.1, and that will then update the H lens to the latest version as well to allow you to have access to all the functions. Okay. As as that. Great, thank you. And a uh, quick question uh, uh, Would the CF adapter work with the new converter for using V lenses? Yes, it would. So basically, it gets obviously a bit of a long image train, but it, with the adapter, then the CF adapter, and then your selected V lens, um, you would get the corresponding focal length reduction and aperture reduction as well. Okay, great. And um, yeah, someone asking just to confirm that the, the distance scale works for the new 45p lens, which it does. Yes, it does, yeah, yeah. Just a different firmware level that's required for that lens, yeah. Okay, great, thank you, Chris. 
So if I can just go back to my presentation. And at this point, we'll bring in Sean and Tom. Are you there, Sean and Tom? Yeah. Hi, mate. Hey, how's it going? Hi, yeah, good. it's good to see you guys again. Um, for followers of our webinars, you'll know that we, we've had individual webinars uh, featuring Tom and Sean earlier in the year. I think it was around about May time, wasn't it? I think. Um, yeah. If I remember correctly. So how, how's things been for you the last few months? Uh, start with Sean. Yeah, not too bad, actually. Yeah, I can't can't complain no no overseas shoots unfortunately but we've been doing all right in the uk with various types of shoots from buildings to cars to helicopters so it's been all right yeah yeah thank you it's not been too bad the new tom thanks mark um i tend to photograph people who have been a bit a little bit shy of uh i, I feel like i've been a bit shy of subject matter for a little while but um it's been a really interesting year. I still feel like a photographer. That's the main thing. And I, I have been shooting some really beautiful stuff. So um, uh, I'm, I'm all good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Great. OK, thank you very much. So obviously, one of the things you've been uh, helping us with is uh, trying out this new XH uh, converter. So um, as people probably know, you're both sort of H users primarily, uh, the, the 100 megapixel. So it was good for you to be able to use some of your H lenses um, on the, the newer formats using the adapter. So we're just going to have a look at some of the images you took for us as part of our sort of launch uh, campaign. Uh, so if I can just go to the next screen. So uh, Tom, this is one of your images. Um, so t first of all, tell us a bit about the shoot, like the theme you chose and, uh, and why you wanted to use the adapter on this type of shoot. The, 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 I mean, the, the first thing that I feel like is quite important to say is that, you know, when, when Hasselblad asks us to do this stuff, we have a completely free brief, which, which is a really yeah. lovely gesture of sort of positivity and support for photographers, I think. So that, that, that's a really lovely uh, opening just to flex what we really want to do, you know, um, which, again, I, I, I think is a really nice thing that you do. So that, that was really good. I've been wanting to shoot Billy here for ages and this just became the perfect excuse to do it really and uh, Billy was photographed um, with me and my team in my East London studio and just to try and flex the I mean it's exciting to have a new bit of kit to play with isn't it that's that's really what this is about it's uh for, for me it was a it was exciting to get a, a really really I mean I couldn't believe when you said that your lenses will be faster and they'll be wider. I was like, okay, that's absolutely perfect. Like a new challenge and a, a new, uh, some fun to be had, I think. So th th this portrait here, rather than exaggerating the um, depth of field effect, to shoot at f1.8 on medium format and just play with the absolute millimeters of focus, depth of field that we had there and, and hitting focus, was a really brilliant challenge and just to get that sort of nuanced aesthetic of a really minimal depth of field um was re is why this picture for me is absolutely beautiful i really love it and uh you know it, it, it's just got a really great look to it on on, on, the, on billy's hand there as the focus uh fades away and and it's just pulling in towards the eyes there and the my my uh, lighting assistant James Hole, who just made an amazing job of putting some really beautiful light on Billy, just um, it all came together like exactly as I'd hoped. So this is the sort of lead image from this series, really. And you, you know, you can see in this portrait of this sort of BTS um, one, you can see how sketchy the studio is. But more, more than that, um, that's us zooming in, really trying to hit focus there. But this frame didn't work quite as well because we're really trying to exaggerate that depth of field effect and and you don't you don't need to sort of go to that really actually it works well enough just in the just this very you know that's quite a shallow plane there on on, on the portrait that you can see and just that quite a lot of that is out of focus is a really lovely thing for us to play with because i'm usually i'm shooting at f8 or f11 most of the time you know i'm, I'm really going on aren't i sorry <laughs> no, it's still great, still great. <laughs> And uh, this this image here is then a good example of sort of like the wider angle, getting the full angle yeah. of the lens. Yeah, that's right. So wide angle lenses are great for this sort of thing because you're not so far distant from your subject. So your communication is still really good, even though we're wearing masks, you know, you, you, you're not so far away. And this, uh, quite a few people have asked me whether this was done in post, but it really wasn't. We were in the studio 
and we got there nice and early and we play around with ideas before the uh, model arrives and w i'm not kidding you we found a massive sheet of perspex in our studio and, and 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 i was like that's just an idea sat there and we brought it in and this beautiful mirror effect and just the tones of it and the shape and just e everything about it again i really really love so the converter enabled us to shoot slightly wider, but get get you know quite quite close in. So that, that that's really good for me. Okay. And then some uh, similar shots here in a different outfit. Yep, yep, yep. We we had a brilliant stylist with Jamie coming in with um. All, all of this is sort of tagged on my Instagram, by the way, if you're interested in any of the, the models or team on this. But um, yep. yeah, d just just. Again, more of the same, a different look and very low key lighting. Um, and you can see again the depth of field effect here, really, really singing how that backhand is out, the forehand is out, and but the eyes are absolutely pin. And we, we, we were really, really supply, surprised by the clarity that we could achieve through this system. I was shooting on the 907X, and uh, which was a really, you know, a new unit for me that I hadn't shot with before, you know, but. It felt really beautiful in our hands and work, worked, yeah, w wonderfully, as you can see, you know. Yeah, we've got a few um, questions, actually. Uh, there's one from Gus. Um, did you find it uh, quite difficult to focus with uh, sort of 1.8 manual focus? Yeah. I guess it's quite yeah. a challenge. Yeah, it was, you know, manual focus at f1.8 or medium format is, uh, we're talking about millimetres, you know, so I'm not going to pretend it's, you're going it, to, we hit it every time because, it was the you know the first time I shot on this kit, but that's the challenge of it. That's where the fun lives, you know. And we had a really professional model. We put a uh, C stand behind their back just to keep them from sort of moving back and forth too too much because they were, yep. You know some of the positions where they were in were quite testing. And uh, but you get there, you know. We zoom in on focus. We zoom in on the back of the camera, and and you get it there. It doesn't take too many. It's just uh, workflow. Yeah, I suppose even with autofocus, with a living, breathing subject that uh, yeah. has to move, it's, it's still a challenge even with autofocus. Yeah. No, but all, yep, all, all used a bit of it. yep. And uh, not one for the, uh, the the risk assessment here, but uh, this is a bit of a <laughs> another behind the scenes of how you took Look, the shot. In a minute, everyone, you're going to see this shot of Sean's tripod, and it's like the most professional thing you've ever seen in your life, right? <laughs> And mine is sort of balancing on an IKEA stool and a couple of studio blocks, so if it's so are watching. Um, no, uh, uh, we uh, all safety, normal safety procedures were well in hand, thank you very much. But uh, we needed a high angle to get the full reflection in on this shot, so uh, yeah, that's what this one's about. Okay, and then uh, just to finish up on your images, um, another nice uh, shallow depth of field example. Beautiful, beautiful, I absolutely love this. The stylists really, really coming into their own. And just making a really punchy eye-catching image of billy here and again look at the depth of field how it's falling off and and just bringing all the attention into the eyes but to be able to play with this on medium format i think is is a really lovely uh new aspect that we've got in our armory now yeah and was it difficult to control a light at such a wide aperture no 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 that's uh well i say no i wasn't doing it james was doing it so no it wasn't <laughs> any trouble at all uh yeah. but he, he he made a brilliant job of uh just shaping that light and dialing it right down and just no nah, that's you know I, iso was right down so it it, it it was fine okay and then just confirmation it was the 100 mil hc lens wasn't it that you used for these yeah. shots yeah okay um, and, uh, and, and 80 as well and an 80 okay 80 yeah for the one. okay great thanks tom thanks. if you just hang around for a few seconds and uh we'll go through sean's uh images so there we go, Sean. Um, so this venue looks amazing. So whereabouts is this venue? Uh, great pictures, by the way, Tom. I really enjoyed those pictures. Fantastic. Um, this is um, this is in Blackpool, where I was born, my hometown. And this is in the famous Blackpool Winter Gardens. This is known as the, the Spanish Hall. And it was designed by a very famous uh, Hollywood film set designer called Meze. He did a lot of very interesting interiors in the UK and, and in and America. And it was a big refurb, I think about it was finished about 30, 1931 after the, after the Great Depression. They were trying to invest more money in Blackpool. And it's recently been refurbished by the Winter Gardens. The ceiling, as you'll see in the wider shot, uh, has recently been refurbished, which we're about. We are going to be shooting this. but It's not quite finished, the paintwork. But I just thought 
when you asked me to do this that I was looking for somewhere not too far away which would help me and also that would have a lot of detail in it to show off uh, the quality of the converter because um, when Chris and, and Hans and yourself explained to me I was a bit skeptical you know because I always grew up when you put another optical device in the middle of a lens the quality is not going to be as good but I'm pretty blown away really with the quality of the converter I've got to say I was quite shocked really so yes yeah, so we've got high camera viewpoint we've got the um, 24 millimeter lens uh, on the, the converter and then an X1D2 which uh, is a camera I've not used before and I actually uh, really enjoyed using that camera as well too I, I I always shoot tethered, and nearly always, I, mainly by cable, sometimes by wireless. And I must confess, the tethering capability of that particular camera was very stable. It never dropped throughout the entire day. So I was uh, I was very impressed with that. Yeah, very impressed. Uh, okay. And then this um, this now, obviously, we we're showing the width of the lens because it's a it's a very wide lens. You can see the new ceiling up at the top right there um, coming in. Uh, I have lit this shot as well, just, just to make it clear that there's uh, four flash heads, four bronchler heads and two move packs, just putting some power in just to just to bring the more detail and more sharpness really out of all, all that detail that's captured in the shot there. I always, I always like to balance my pictures with light, as, as, as you well know, Mark. Uh, yep. But again, the lens has performed incredibly well, the lens and the adapter, I should say, because I have to confess with my 100 megapixel camera, the, the 24mm lens, it's a great lens, but... The edges are with a 100 megapixel sensor because it's an it's a HCD lens, not a HC lens. So I'm pushing it right to the edges. But when you put the adapter on, the edge quality is really, really nice. Yeah, really nice quality. And you notice the difference, even you know, taking the crop away in terms of you know the the, the convert obviously corrects that crop. Um, but even without that, you still noticed a bit of a difference in the quality, did you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not technically minded enough. I mean, Chris has explained why it's bending the light round, but it's definitely making a, a big difference to the uh, edge definition. Yeah, I can see that uh, quite clearly without any shadow of a doubt. And the big thing with, especially being a, an architectural photographer, you, you, that's the problem sometimes when you're moving down sensor size, your lenses are suddenly no longer as wide as you need them to be because I shoot pretty wide anyway with my style of photography, but most photographers, even if the lens is too wide, you can always crop in a bit. If it's not wide enough, you can't quite get where you need to be. Uh, and then the sort of the main shot of the space, which is where the camera's in this position. Now, obviously, I've got an elevated camera position, which is ideal, again, for shooting a, a space like this. So if we okay, move on to yeah. so the ultra wide, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the sort of. You know, this shot I thought would show off really the capability of how wide the lens is and its capabilities. I have to say, um, the, the other thing I noticed uh, with the X1DT as well uh, is, is the improvement in the way you're handling the, the chip now. I can see improvements, particularly with the highlight recovery, which is quite incredible with this new range of chips. But when I remember the H5D50 some time ago, it was okay, but it's, this is so much better now. Whether it's the new uh, settings in focus you know you've got the v1 the v2 the v3 and yep. the highlight and shadow recovery and if you look at the the top of the image where the ceiling's coming in you see this white plaster work, this beautiful plaster work and uh, obviously i've had to allow quite a bit of light to come in from the ceiling and there was i was losing detail in those white areas but it was very easy to rec recover it in the focus software just to pull it in sorry tom okay. yeah no, I, I think, Sean, it's really important for you to point out because I, I, I absolutely love these shots. I think they're so strong, but that there's no exposure stacking or uh, any other cheats, no Photoshop that you've done all of this in camera, which is what I couldn't believe when, when, you, when you told me that before. I yeah. literally couldn't believe it. Absolutely, Tom. Yeah, it's all one shot uh, caught in camera. Obviously, I pull the highlights down a bit, like I said, to pull a bit more detail in there. I haven't opened the shadows up because we've lit them with the with the bronchler flash carefully positioned to throw light into the plaster work areas and the two corridors down either side we've thrown some light down those corridors too as well and again it's just using different types of shapers that will throw light over long distances and other shapers will throw lights over shorter distances and just blending that through so it's not too obvious it's lit in a way it's captured in in that one shot but this is why i'm a i'm a great believer in medium format because it does give you the a, a, an amazing dynamic range which helps in in the sort of techniques that i'm using and uh, and i i just think lighting not only does it balance the picture but you're adding something to the picture it brings something out particularly in areas like we've got lots of detail it really brings the detail out of the shot so it's uh, really important and these beautiful 
light fittings have been away and been restored these amazing chandeliers that are hanging down i mean one of them's hanging a bit lower in the background if you look closely because like i say the refurb's not totally complete yet uh, and there will be some clouds that are going to get painted in onto this uh, blue plaster area but it's a uh, pretty amazing space isn't it it's uh, it's a very interesting space yeah great you, you also made it look amazing sean so good on you yeah yeah no it's a great place to shoot and, and like tom said it's just uh you know it's really nice to be asked to do these things and play with new bits of kit because it's all um, it's all good fun i mean my long-suffering assistant mark hyde who helps me and settle the lighting up on this shot he, he he's techie as well and he loved just playing with the new camera and having a look at things so yeah i really enjoyed doing that yeah very much so and you mentioned the the sort of the edge in detail so on this image here if you if you look at the bottom right hand corner and then we've got the uh, a close-up of that <laughs> area so what what are you looking for in this particularly for quality well, it, you can see how the sharpness and detail is being returned. There's no smearing going on. It's particularly look at that pattern. That's a new carpet that's gone in there, that new patterning carpet, which is matching the very similar original carpet. You see how it's holding the detail right through. And same with the plaster work, this little bit of illuminated area here and through to the bar, it's holding it right through. And the other thing, and again, Chris would be the guy to explain this in focus with the, the corrections, you, the software corrections you get for any distortion on the lens. It really stalks the lines up. I mean, you've got a bit of stretch because it's a very wide lens, but you can see it's handled the lines in the image very, very, very well indeed. I was, uh, I have to say, I, I didn't think it was going to be as good optically as it was, but that's probably old school photographer thinking you put an adapter on and you lose a bit of quality, but I don't know how they figured it out, but it's definitely worked. There's no doubt about it. I just, I just really like this. Um, I mean, I've been a Hasselblad user my whole career, and I'm very passionate about Hasselblad, but I just love the, the way Hasselblad now are making the cameras much more modular because, um, you know, with the 907 now and the X1D, the fact that you can put these adapters on, put different lenses on, you know, put old-fashioned lenses. I mean, I shoot quite a lot of moving projects. I, I sort of do director of photography, DLP, they call it, on, on various move, movie projects now, you know, move, motion projects, I should say. And in that industry, a lot goes on with, putting different older style lenses on cameras to get different effects and i think this is a great thing with hasselblad now that you can do all these different adapters lens types because i've got a big v-series system from the past which i never got rid of and there's a lot of stuff you can use and uh, play around with yeah that's my big tripod there tom it's quite impressive isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> i'm so i'm so jealous oh. it's a great tripod that but you can get a real good high this column's a great thing because you can, um, this is like a giant monopod attached to your tripod. And this is another thing about with my H system and same with the X, you can send your camera really high up in the air and just control everything from your phone or your iPad. So it can give you those elevated viewpoints, which means you maybe don't have, need, cam you know, you can't use camera movements so or you just want a different viewpoint from your subject. Really, really useful way of working. I, I, do, I just love the Wi-Fi capability of the uh, cameras, both, both on my H and, uh, and on this new X camera as well too. Yeah, it was a, a lot of fun to shoot there. I got the old H camera in there as well, gave it a plug, you see. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a there's a question. Um, if we can bring Chris back in, if you didn't mind. Are you still there, Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah still here. Uh, so there was a question uh, a few minutes ago about using the HTS with the adapter and H lenses. Is that possible and a good combination? Yeah, you can do it. Um, I mean, effectively, you're reducing one focal length by 0.8 and then the HTS will multiply that by 1.5 um, but you're still going to end up with that slightly shorter focal length but with the original field of view compared to the standard uh, XH adapter which has got no optics in it so yeah it's, it's perfectly usable hmm. okay and then a, a few comments with regards to um, so as I said uh, with Sean and Tom being sort of H users so does, does this open up the X to be sort of like a, a, an extra pit that you could add to your kit in terms of like a backup or a second camera? It provides that, as I said, you, you said about the modularity. So I guess the, com the cross compatibility aids for that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, 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 I think, I, I, oh, go on, Sean, sorry. You go, ahead, you go ahead, Tom, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say anything that promotes a sort of efficiency and an econ economy and versatility in our game is 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 almost essential to what we do i think that we have to, we have to be open to that and but and, and anything that you know give us money for us to shoot in different ways um it's really important for us i think sean 
Yeah, I, I would again totally agree. I mean, I, I was quite taken with the X1D2. It's the first time I've used one apart from when I played with the X1D when it first came out. I think in my particular case, it was good, I would definitely consider a, a backup system this way because it's much more cost effective than another H camera. But it would probably be the 907 that would appeal for me because I could then put that on my Linhoff camera as well in my particular instance. But as a as a handheld camera, I thought the X camera was a was a very beautiful camera. It's very it's got very nice build quality to it. So is the 907. You know they're, they're really uh, good. So yeah, I think I mean because uh, you you know at the moment due to the cost, you, it's, if I'm going abroad, then I might take another digital back. But for local stuff where I'm closer, I would probably have a, a DSLR as a backup camera, which is something I don't really want to do. So the idea of having a an X or a 907 backup does appeal, yeah, very much so without having to buy a new set of lenses really as well yeah okay and then for both of your shoots you use tripods um but there's a couple of questions about like does the the converter weight or, or the weight of the converter add to the hand uh, sort of uh, sort of change the handling of the camera at all in your experience i know as i say you use tripods but like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you i like very rarely you know how if you've got a bad back when you're shooting, you never feel the pain of it because you're so focused on what you're doing, you know? I, I never yeah. ever feel the weight of the camera because that's the thing, without the camera, you're nothing anyway. So, you know, what are you even doing in the room, you know? So uh, I never ever suffer from that. I'm, you know, and I'm not especially fit and strong as you can probably sense. Um, so I, uh, th 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 that's not so much of an issue for me. And, 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 and it doesn't matter, it's about the results really. I, I would totally agree what Tom's saying there. It's all about the results. And, I, and to be honest, again, I've always been, personally, I've always been used to using, I'm not comfortable with a DSLR. I know it sounds stupid, holding the camera up to my eye, I'm not that comfortable. So I, I get on very well with the H camera as a handheld camera. And I found the X1D with the adapter. Yeah, yeah it, didn't, it didn't make any difference to me whatsoever. Yeah, it just seemed like okay. And the lens I had, Chris, was a, a more modern lens, I think, so I, I still had the autofocus. I mean, I don't, I use back button focus, I think you call it, where I, I keep it in manual focus and just use the button to press. Yeah. Well, it worked um, worked really, really well, really, really well. And, I, and the 907, I tried that, uh, which with the adapter worked well, and I also had it on the back of my V series for a bit of stuff as well. So I just love this modularity that you've got all these different systems you can use. It's it's like Hasselblad of old, that to me. It's making everything really versatile and really usable, and, and I think there's a lot to be gained from that. Okay, um, just checking if there's any more questions that we haven't got round to. Um, no, I think we're all good. Um, oh, can you fit the lens collar to the adapter for tripod use? Um, so I think yeah, that's so the basically, tripod. yeah, the, the converter uh, outer shell is exactly the same size as the standard XH adapter. So the our standard tripod adapter will 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 hold that no problem. Thank you. Okay, great. So that's that's it. Uh, thanks to Tom and Sean for uh, giving up your time once again to to appear on our webinar. It's much appreciated, and also you know of course uh, thanks for the shoot itself and uh, some amazing images. And it was good to to see a bit more behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, and thanks, Chris. No problem. Thanks so much. And see you all again thanks, soon. Man. Thank you. Yeah. All the best now. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. I just got a couple more slides just to go through. I'll just uh, share my screen again. There we go. Uh, so, as always, after the webinar, you'll get a uh, feedback survey pop up. If you could uh, possibly take the time to help us fill that in, that's really good to, to know uh, what people feel about our webinars and what you'd like to see more of. As I said at the beginning, uh, just another reminder that our past webinars are on our Hasselblad YouTube channel. So if you've missed any of the last few weeks and months, you can catch up on them there. And the recording from today's will be up online um, at latest sort of tomorrow morning. And then for Hasselblad.com, anything for our future events and webinars, of course, lots of information on our products, our partner network, lots of inspirational stories from people like Tom and Sean that are using our cameras out in the field. A little bit of our history and you can request a demo and any support that you need so thanks very much for joining us and uh, hope to see you again on another webinar soon thank you very much <laughs>